Well, hello, everybody. Um, you might not realize this, but this is the sixth time I'm trying to record this uh, session. So um, you can see this is Facebook Friday, but it's not live. I had to volunteer at my son's school this morning, try to get this um, out and going before I left. Recorded it about three times with uh, to no avail, having uh, trouble with my microphone. And um, now this is about the sixth time that I have tried to record this. So hopefully this time it's going to work. Anyway, we are back. We're talking about our spinal movement pattern. And today we're going to have a brief discussion on the spinal Perez uh, reflex. So as a recap, we talked about the withdrawal reflex the first week with the fear paralysis um, reflex. And then we talked about how the um, breathing movement pattern is the first uh, pattern when the baby is born. And that is related to the moral reflex and that dampens the fear paralysis reflex. And then we talk about the mouthing reflex um, or the mouthing movement pattern is the first way that the child is able to reach through rooting, sucking, and swallowing reflexes. And then we began our little mini series discussing the spinal uh, uh, movement pattern through the tonic labyrinthine reflex, the spinal gallant, and today the spinal Perez reflexes. And just a little recap of the spinal movement. Spinal movement is movement from the head to the tailbone. Um, it's the initial way that the baby begins to move. It wiggles by flexing and curving the spine. The spine moves by, um, it flexes and extends. It moves side to side, it rotates. All the lateral movements of the body are supported by that center in the spine. The baby um, you know, moves from the head and the tail. And um, the reflexes that are associated with the spine helps teach the baby to roll and to begin to understand the left and the right sides of the body. So um, in this, I borrowed this picture from the QRI integration manual from Bonnie Brandis just because I thought it was a really good illustration of how when you activate the spinal prez, um, it's in the upper back, how it um, starts to elicit the movement of the feet, which is called the cross extensor reflex. It emerges at birth. It's active about two to three months of life. It integrates at three to six months. Um, or it should, and it activates the cross extensor reflex, um, helping to prepare the baby to crawl. And it helps with walking, running, clapping, and swimming, and organized movements and sports. So the spinal Perez, if it's not integrated, it may delay the development of the cerebral spinal fluid pumping mechanism and the cranial movement system, so that cannot be good. Um, it also leads to poor processing speeds, difficulty with long and short-term memory, logical thinking, creativity, and abstract thinking. Also, poor maturation of the neurons and the connection between the brainstem and the cortex and the functioning of the pineal gland. It uh, reduces and narrows the vision field, so not so much peripheral vision. Um, it can lower muscle tone. Um, they can have lower back stability uncomfortable um, to have people behind you. These people might feel creepy if somebody's standing behind them. They like to be at the end of the line. They like to have the back to them when they're sitting in the classroom. So that could be, you know, something for the teenagers. Um, they have, and it's associated with emotional stability, fears and phobias. So this reflex is not only a movement reflex, but it is connected to the limbic system and connect, um, related to emotional instability and fears. So for lack of a better picture, I borrowed my picture of the spinal gallant testing. Um, uh, testing. So it's pretty much kind of the same thing except for my hand you see is in the lower part of the spine. That's where the spinal gallant is. The spinal perez is up more towards the top. So you would test by stroking from the middle of the back up to the neck um, in an upward fashion rather than a downward fashion, and you would see if the um, shoulders or the head kind of comes up, or if they just, if you're older and maybe you kind of suppress it, you feel um, a little bit like a strange sensation. So, what can be done if it's unintegrated? There's uh, reflex uh, activities from last week, so sliding on the back is. Um, 
a good uh, way to help integrate both the spinal blunt and the spinal Perez reflexes. Um, if you missed the video, you can just watch the last webinar because I have these in videos. Um, but as the child is sliding on the back, remember if they do it alone, that is an active movement. If they do it um, with support or help, if somebody else is helping them, that is a passive movement. So they will be, um, uh, you know, they're going to have trouble. If they have unintegrated spot, uh, back reflexes, they're going to have trouble sliding on their back. So um, you're probably going to have to help them out anyway by pulling or pushing their knees gently. You're going to be looking for nice, smooth movement all the way through their head. Their head should be nodding back and forth like you saw in the video. And um, if not, if it stiffens, we've probably activated their fear paralysis by activating their vestibular system um, in their inner ear. Um, they can, you know, get maybe a little bit dizzy because of that head nod is moving and they're on their back. It's a different position. Um, so if that's so, you need to stop that right away. Make sure you never, um, you know, activate. We don't want to ever activate the fear paralysis. That's, in, you know, enough problems all by itself. Um, the next exercise is spinal walking. And that's simply, it was also in the last video with the video, uh, last webinar with the video, but we're just walking up the spine, activating the different um, nerve endings and providing um, more uh, input to help desensitize that back. Rolling bottom side to side as they move their bottom side to side, they're rotating that uh, spinal column and activating the cerebral spinal fluid which is uh, really important for this reflex. And um, I just borrowed this picture from the other one, but they don't have to have their knees up. They can put their legs down. And what you want them to do is to be able to press their shoulders and their upper back into the mat or into your hands if you want to put your hands in the back. Um, make sure that they're breathing out for seven seconds as they do it so they're not um, they're, So they're relaxing the rest of their body. We don't want tight legs, tight stomach, tight arms because we don't want them recruiting other muscles to find their shoulders. So if you want to learn more about um, primitive reflexes, how, they, how it influences um, learning and uh, behavior, or if you want to learn about how uh, rhythmic movements can help integrate reflexes or how to integrate reflexes with isometric uh, pressure or even through games. I am going to be teaching a Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training Level 1 course in October 26th and 27th. I am in Lehigh, Utah, so it will be here. Um, I don't have the exact location down, but it's going to be around here somewhere. Um, or you can also just join our membership, uh, membership site at wholechildlearningandwellness.com. Go to tabs, go to the members area and follow the prompts. And um, I'm going to, I have a lot of information on there and I'm gonna start archiving these um, Facebook Live videos. So if you, um, uh, in a few days, I'm gonna take most of them down. I'll always leave the last one or two weeks up so you can still find them on Facebook, but then the old videos will be archived and, um, in our members area. Our next, uh, I think we might have one more week on the uh, spinal reflexes or we're gonna be moving on to our next movement pattern. Um, and until then, striving to put children first and I will see you in the next video.